Hey there everybody, how's it going? In today's video, you guys are going to see a DVD status effect guide. I know there's a hundred, well, feels like a hundred different status effects, all which should be popping up on this side of the screen over here right now. Just constantly popping in and out of existence, showcasing how many there really are. There's a lot now, especially with the new Resident Evil update and Nemesis' own status effect. There's a lot now. <laughs> so... Without farber ado, let me put down the baby, and we'll pull up a little gameplay footage to kind of showcase what they look like when you're actually inside of the match, instead of just me sitting here explaining them to you. It gives you guys a little visual, you know, visual evidence for you to see what it looks like, all right? See you in a sec. Well, there's that gameplay footage I just saw you guys about. So you're going to see two status effects right off the bat. One is called Haste, one is called Exhausted. And haste is generally caused by, and exhausted are generally caused by what are called survivor exhaustion perks. And you'll see what, what I mean by that in a second here. So you notice that I'm going to be sprinting right off the bat. That little foot symbol, which is going to be going down there, is called haste. What that does is it increases your player movement speed. The perk I'm running that makes it possible is called sprint burst. It's the topmost perk and essentially just increases your movement speed as soon as you start sprinting. After the haste effect is up, you get the exhausted effect, which is the heart symbol, which again is going to pop up right down there as well. What that does is it doesn't allow you to use an exhaustion perk until the cooldown is done. And it only cools down if you're standing still or crouching or walking. It will not cool down if you're sprinting. So you noticed how earlier when I was sprinting around, that little bar wasn't going down on top. That, that little bar on there wasn't going down. That's because I was sprinting. The next stuff you're going to see is it's going to be a whole lot. So we're going to pause the video so I can go over a little bit more in depth as well. Is my gosh, it's a lot of stuff that pops up right about now. <laughs> All right. So Nemesis is going to hit me. And that's going to cause a whole bunch of status effects. So let's go over them really quick here. You have all these bad boys right here. All these guys. So the one we're going to be focusing on is Oblivious. That little hand over the face symbol right there. What that one does is it doesn't let you hear the killer's terror radius. And it doesn't give you a heartbeat when even if you're by the killer. So you can be standing right by the killer and you're not going to hear a thing. All right, that's one I really want you guys to focus on right now because you guys are going to see that in a second here. The other two I want you to focus on is this one here. This one's called Hemorrhage. The little blood symbol. The little blood, 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 blood drop right there. The little blood drop right there. But that just increases your bleeding frequency. So you're going to see a lot more blood in the ground as opposed to just occasionally here and there, what you generally get once you're injured as a survivor. And the next one I really want you guys to focus on too is this one here. It's called Mangled. Yeah, that little bone breaking one right there. What Mangle does is it increases the healing speed that for a survivor. So it's gonna make it take longer for survivors to heal up. It can be absolutely killer if the absolutely killer if the killer's running nurse's call because ah, ah. So you notice I'm running away from the killer? You have the chase music happening. As soon as I'm duck in this hallway, the chicken chase music is, is going to disappear. It's gone now. We don't hear a terrorist because of oblivious. We're standing right by him, we don't hear a terrorist at all. We're literally staring at him, no terror radius, no harbor. We're just hearing the classic Dead by Daylight music of calmness. And then as soon as we start getting into a chase again, you get the chase music right there. So that's what that one does. Next one you're going to see is called Blindness, which is the little eye symbol right there. So our little, our friend Jackie got hooked right there by a nemesis. We should be sitting there right now, but we're not due to blindness. Blindness doesn't let the survivor see any roars at all. No, no people on hook. And also I'm running Kindred as well, which I would should be seeing Nemesis Aurora and Jackie's Aurora, which is our rightmost perk. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking for the Hex Totem, because we also are cursed with a, you know, Hex Totem. That little like triangle bony symbol right there. And as soon as I cleanse this totem, I'm going to be able to see their roars again because he's running Hex Third Seal, and that's how I'm blinded because he hit me. It's a, it's a Hag perk, I believe. Yeah, it's a Hag perk. Whenever you hit a survivor, they're all inflicted with the blindness effect. As soon as it's cleansed, look, right there. Now I can see Jackie's Zora and I can see Nemesis Zora as well, which is really good for me. Blindness is absolutely killer and survivors in general. Nemesis is using one of his new perks. It is called Eruption. And what it does is it essentially traps the generator. So what I had him do was I was working on the generator 
And then I had him down Jackie, which causes the eruption to explode. And whenever survivor is working at a gem, when the eruption goes off, they're inflicted with the incapacitated status effect, which is that little hand symbol right there. And it doesn't let you interact with anything besides dropping pallets or vaulting windows for 16 seconds, I believe it is. It's absolutely killer. I can't touch the gen, and I can't heal up Jackie right now. Can't do any of that. Literally nothing. Stuck. Frozen. Completely useless. It basically renders survivors pretty useless. As soon as it disappears, I get the option to work on the generator again, and I get the option to heal up Jackie again. Which is chef's kiss. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see there. So this one that we're doing right now is called Hindered. And the reason we're running Clown, because he switched over to Clown, is because Clown is the easiest killer to really visualize Hindered on. Hindered slows down your survivor's movement speed, and the killers can also get it too, because it's getting Hindered as well, but it slows down your, your player's movement speed. Uh, Clown, once every run through his gas, you get the Hindered effect, which is why we're running on him. This next one here, I want you to pay attention to the noise that happens too. This one is called the exposed as effect. This is potentially the most deadly effect for survivors at all. He's running the uh, Iron Maiden, and what it does is whenever I hop inside of a locker and hop out of a locker, no matter if it's fast or slow, I get inflicted with the exposed as effect. Now, take, now listen here. As soon as I jump out, that noise, that <laughs> means I've been inflicted with the exposed effect. That little skull symbol right there is the exposed effect. And it, what exposed does is it allows the survivor, uh, survivor to get instantly down from full health to the dying state. Just killer can essentially one hit a survivor down. Just one hit a survivor. So now we're going down the hook. Our friend Jackie's running Borrow Time, which is a bill perk, which you're going to see what happens here. She's going to unhook me. Any second now. <laughs> All right, she's going for the unhook, and then the killer's going to hit me here. Look at that. We've been hit. I'm going to run off to the side. What Borrow Time does is it gives you the Endurance effect. What Endurance does is it allows you to tank a hit, and it puts you into the Deep Wound status effect. Right now, we're inside Deep Wound. That yellow bar need for a name. We have to mend ourselves before we can uh, heal or really interact with anything. You can't, I mean, you can do other stuff, but if you don't do it, you'll see what happens if you don't mend yourself before the bar goes down. I'm going to unhook Jackie here. She's going to get hit by the killer, and then she's going to demonstrate what happens if you don't mend yourself before the bar goes down to zero. And you really want to make sure you mend up. You really want to make sure you mend yourself. Uh, Deep Wound can be afflicted by a few killers. Legion... Death Slinger, uh, other killers can inflict it with add-ons as well. It's a very deadly effect for survivors too, um, because it doesn't let you really interact with anything else. It forces you to waste at least 10 seconds of your time to do this. Because if you don't do, if you don't mend yourself, you go down like that. The next one we're gonna run is Undetectable. So you notice how I'm hearing uh, Darius right now? Undetectable is a killer-only effect. We're going to pause it really quick. It's a killer-only effect. I was just hearing this tear radius, and as soon as I'm going to pop around this corner, I'm, I won't be hearing it. You won't hear his tear radius at all. And I'm going to pop around this corner right here, and then he's right there. And then I get down. He also doesn't have a red stain when the killer is undetectable. Now, this one is a pyramid head-only status effect. It's called Tormented. You only get it by running over his trails. Over, like, the trails that Pyramid leaves on the ground, you only get tormented by running over his trails. Which, I just jumped on one, and now I'm tormented. Being tormented, once you get downed, like our friend Jack is about to do here, allows Pyramid Head to send you to what's called the Cage of Atonement. It's essentially a free hook. It essentially is basically a, a, it's essentially a cage that acts like a hook, but it doesn't activate hook related perks, which is why you want to avoid being tormented. So Saltine is over there. I can see Zorora. I'm inside the cage right now. If Saltine was running borrowed time and the killer hit me immediately after I got out of the cage, it wouldn't activate the endurance effect. It wouldn't activate the deep wound effect because cages don't count as hooks for perk related things essentially it's rather annoying it's what makes pyramid very strong as a killer so that's what it looks like being inside of the cage we're gonna run back to the killer now we're also gonna get tormented again and i'm gonna show you that what happens once you get inside the cage a second time 
like I said, it's essentially basically, it's basically, you know, basically a hook. What happens is you have to do skill checks, kind of like you'd have to do on a hook. And again, you can see the survivor's auroras and everything. You can see, if you're running Kindred, you can see the Gilda's aurora if, if he's inside of a certain radius of you. The Fred Jacket's getting down to you right now. Which is, you know, really, I'm sure she probably enjoyed that from the amount of times to kill her in customs. <laughs> I'm sure she probably enjoyed that from the one-time skiller in customs. She's gonna save me the cage of atonement right about now. All right, there we go. Go into the cage, the beautiful cage of atonement. Love it. Little spiky cage that pyramid puts inside us. Look at that. Look at that beautifulness. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. And now we have to do uh, skill checks in order to survive. Basically a hook, you know. Saltine's gonna come for the rescue, which is really cool of him. I'm really thankful for him for doing that. Otherwise, you know, we would have to redo this entire section again once recording it. <laughs> oh, man. Now, there's something interesting we noticed when we were doing this too. And you'll see that in a second here. It's a very interesting, like, two interesting things we noticed. If Pyramid Head is by a caged person, so it's within eight meters. If Pyramid is staying within eight meters of a person inside the cage, the cage of Atonement gets moved to the other side of the map. Basically, it's to the farthest corner away from Pyramid Head. Which is really cool. You can use it, you can use it uh, strategically as Pyramid Head to try and get survivors hooked uh, inside the cage on the other side of the map away from everyone else if they're by you. You can use it strategically if somebody's going to go for the you know uncaging. You can also use it to kind of deny them from doing that and just send them to the other side of the map. What I want you guys to really focus on right here is the fact that I'm tormented. You can notice tormented from the little, you know, barbed wire symbol around my portrait. So I'm tormented right now. And what we notice is once ever a tormented survivor on, like gets a other survivor out of the cage of atonement, they lose the tormented effect. I'm no longer tormented now because I took him out of there. So the only way to get rid of the tormented effect is to either A, get put inside the Cage of Atonement and then get taken out, or B, take somebody out of the Cage of Atonement. There's the only two ways. So now that I'm tormented again, and this is my third hook, Jackie can actually Mori me. German has built in Mori when you're tormented, and if you're if you're on your last hook and you get tormented, he can instantly kill you. It's a Bills and Mori. It's beautiful. It's really quick. It's awesome. It's great for you as the killer. <laughs> the next effect we're going to be going on to is the Plague's Power. Infection. Which is, it was, it's a really fun one. It's a really gross one. Vami Mommy is a really awesome and beautiful killer. And just being thrown up on is so much fun. But what Jackie's going to do here is she's going to throw up on me. Get me infected. Now I'm a, now I'm infected and I also have the broken status effect, which is gonna pop up right there. What broken does is it doesn't allow you to kill yourself. You can't heal yourself, you can't be healed by the survivors, you can do nothing. So right here I'm gonna try and use my med kit that I brought into the match to showcase this, and I can't I can't heal myself up at all. I can't. The only way to get rid of infection is to cleanse at one of Plague's fountains. So as soon as I cleanse this, I'm not infected anymore, and it also brings you back up to your full health state. Which is really cool. Really cool. However, sometimes you don't want to cleanse against her because she can it gives her a power called corrupt uh we call it red vomit. But essentially what that version does is it allows her to throw up and damage you with it instead of getting you sick with it. And also I'm getting a little bit lost here because we're we sat we decided to do this all in the resident the new Resident Evil map since we're inside customs and it's only available in customs. And if my god <laughs> it is a big map. It is a big map. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna get reinfected again. Right about now we're gonna get reinfected because Jackie and Saltine are having fun trying to, you know, shot shoot each other from the balcony from the floor to the balcony all right now we're infected and what's interesting about plague's infection is that it's actually on a timer system you notice the green the, like the red the red splotch behind my portrait and then there's a green splotch and the green splotch is slowly taking away and getting bigger once that reaches all the way up to the top i reach full infection infection has multiple tiers once you get full infection you get the broken status effect once again and now we're broken again now we can't be healed up 
and we're both <laughs> sick and throwing up, which makes it easier for the plague to find us as well, because she can have an easy time hearing and locating us, because she'll be able to hear all the throwing up and everything. Now I'm he fully healed up again. What's interesting, another interesting thing about plague's power. All right, so Jackie went to over to the pool and she got the damaging puke, and she's damaging us from the red puke is supposed to the green puke. Which interesting about her power is the red puke only damages you, it doesn't affect you. So Jack is gonna put us on the hook, Saltine is gonna unhook us now, and Saltine's not gonna be infected because the red infect, the red puke doesn't infect you. Jack is gonna throw up us on the green puke again. There we go, now we're infected. Then she's gonna re-put us on the hook. Right, right about now. It's just a little fun communicating in Discord. <laughs> Jack, put us on the hook, and the Saltine's gonna unhook us, and that'll show you ways that infection can transfer. You can get infected from other survivors if they're infected. Saltine unhooks us, and Saltine gets infected because he interacted with, with me while I'm infected as well. Another way you can do that is working on generate together. I'm working on this gen by myself. I'm not infected. Everything's fine. As soon as Saltine pops on, right about now, the generator gets infected. That little green aurora around it, little, little stinkiness coming off of it, and then I get infected just from working on it with him. So infection could be spread via survivors. Next, what we're going to be focusing on is Freddy Krueger's sleep penalty and essentially just his power in general as well. So sleep penalty is a very interesting thing that really only applies to one thing in particular, but it's also a status effect, and Freddy is a very commonly run killer because he's pretty powerful in his own right. So right now we're inside the dream world. Freddy's over there. That little timer around our portrait is we have 60 seconds until we fall asleep and go inside of Freddy's Freddy's dream world. Right now we're just in the regular world, just basically looking at you know, Raccoon City map. It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. Freddy can put you inside the dream world by hitting you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get hit by Freddy. And now we're inside the dream world. And all the little red bubbles on the ground, red bubbles of blood, are his power. Well, one of his powers. He can also replace for dream palettes. We don't have that footage, though, unfortunately. <laughs> but... Yeah, so J uh, Freddy can put you to sleep by hitting you. So Jackie woke herself up with an alarm clock, and now she's going to do the wake-up action on us. Cool, now we're awake. Now we're inside the dream world anymore. Now what's going to happen is sleep penalty is going to apply every time you do it. Now I'm waking up Jackie. Cool, that's the first time. We're going to wake up Jackie again here. You notice how it's slower due to sleep penalty. What sleep penalty does is every time you do the wake-up action on a survivor, yourself as opposed to using an alarm clock it takes longer every single time up to two times it, it takes twice the line i believe i believe this uh status effect has a three tier system so this is the top second tier right now and then the next time will be the top tier so it took a lot longer that time and now we're on the top tier version of it which is it takes insanely long <laughs> it's we tested it out quite a bit it this is the highest it can go it is rather annoying, especially if Freddy it gives Freddy a really, really huge amount of time to catch up a survivor after doing it this way. Some things about Freddy is if you wake up with an alarm clock on the map and Freddy hits you, like Freddy's about to do right now, it doesn't put you to sleep. Using an alarm clock to wake yourself up gives you 30 seconds of invincibility as opposed to falling asleep. Because you 30 seconds free time, you won't fall asleep in that time span at all. It's a pretty powerful thing. And then, once the 30 seconds are up, that little yellow timer going around my my portrait right now, my little character's picture on the left side of the screen, it goes back to the regular timer where it takes 60 seconds for you to fall asleep. So if you use an alarm clock, it can take up to 90 seconds for you to fall back asleep and go into the dream world. Which is really awesome. The next one we're going to go into is the Doctor. It, it's a killer everyone, a lot of people hate going up against the Doctor for a fair reason. He can be really annoying to go up against. A lot of fun to play as, can be rather annoying to go up against. <laughs> he has an effect called Madness. It's a three tier system. There's Madness tier one, Madness tier two, Madness tier three. Right now, we're at Madness one. Doctor's going to shock us quite a bit. You notice that, that bar around the little brain symbol right there goes about halfway. Okay, now we're in Madness 2, and our portrait has a little, like, little st staticky looking right now. And now we're in Tier 3, where it has the mega status static going on it. 
What Madness does is it gives you Madness skill checks where skill checks can go forward and backwards and pop up anywhere on the screen. And then Madness 2 will spawn in fake doctors, illusionary doctors. They're just there kind of jump scare survivors and push them off of areas of potential. Madness tier 3, the doctor can actually see the, su the survivor's fake doctors. In order to get out of Madness tier 3, you have to use do the snap out of an action. Right there, there are some skill checks. Right there, there are some skill checks that are considered Madness skill checks. Backward ones, and then ones just popping up anywhere on the screen right now. Now we're out of Madness. Now we're going to go back and we're going to get, you know, re-Madness again. So, because we didn't see the illusionary doctors at all. Cool, look at that. We're getting back up there, Madness. Love to see that. Love to see that. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna work on this generator to try and showcase the Madness skill checks a little bit more as the Doctor is gonna constantly, you know, make us insane. We need the doctor, anytime though. Anytime though, Doctor. Yes, we know you're beautiful. We know you're beautiful, sir. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I love to see that. I love to see that. All right, so me and Jackie are working on it right now. We're going to be seeing a lot of, well, not a lot. We actually didn't get that many, unfortunately. But we're going to see, wait, we're going to see, be, uh, there we go. That's a mana skill check right now. We're going to be seeing a few more mana skill checks as well. There's no, that's a regular skill check. That's a madness skill check. A mana skill check is a skill check that's going this way as opposed to this way and pops up anywhere on the screen. Anywhere on the screen at all. Once you're at tier three, you cannot work on a generator. You, you essentially can't. Tier 3 makes the survivor useless, and you want to get out of it as soon as possible. And right there as well, what we saw was an illusionary doctor. Because we're at Madness Tier 2 right now. We're going to see one pop up right by the doctor here as well. Right on his side. Right there. That's that's a fake doctor. She's pretty much there for jump scares. Now you can see it from the uh, doctor's perspective as well. Another thing about doctors, once you shock somebody using electric, your electric shock therapy power, which is, you know, shock therapy right there, they can't drop a pallet for, I think it's like one second after they get shocked initially. So right now we're just getting our friends, you know, getting our friends madness levels up. Not like I don't do that in regular, regular life anyways. <laughs> but just driving them sandy, I'm going to go on the other side of the map. And with their, we're going we're gonna to showcase here is the doctor seeing the illusionary doctor's auroras. Once you see like that, once you see the wake doctor, the white aurora going off of the map right now, that means there's a survivor nearby because they only pop up around survivors inside tier three, tier two and tier three. The difference between tier two and tier three is tier three, the doctor can see the auroras of the fake doctors. Tier two, the doctor can't. And that's not just failing skill checks right now too. <laughs> They're just constantly failing banda skill checks right there. It's beautiful. Next, what we're going to go into is Bloodlust. It's a killer effect only. And it activates after a certain time period once you're inside of chase. And it's three tiers as well. So we're gonna just chase around our friends for a little bit. Uh, it's, Bloodlust is very useful if you're stuck inside of a really big loop with a survivor, like around a god pal or something. What it does is once you get, once the killer gets Bloodlusted, it increases their movement speed. And it can increase it to quite a fair amount, honestly. Once you get to the top tier, you can essentially overpass a doctor. I'm not overpass the doctor, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you can overpass the survivor. You can just pass them up. You're that quick once you get to the top tier version. We just have to relocate our little friend here. Gotta find Saltine. Oh, there's Saltine. Look, I love to see that. Oh, there's another pallet stun. Don't you guys love to see that? I know all my survivor mains out there love to see good pallet stun on the killer. All right, so now we're following Saltine. We're gonna just constantly follow him for a little bit until we start getting bloodlusted. And I'll show you guys the increasing movement speed that you get from Bloodlust. There's Bloodlust Tier 1, which we're a little bit faster now. It's, we're having a little easier time catching up. We're about to hit Bloodlust Tier 2 any second now. Right, should be right about now, I believe. Any second now. Wow, it's taking a hot minute, isn't it? There we go! <laughs> tier 2. Now we're way faster than the Survivor. We can essentially just, like, overpass them. And we're about to hit Tier 3 any second now. What tier three does, you just, you, you zoom, you zoom, you know? You zoom, you zoom, you just zoom really quickly. You super fast. Now we're at tier three, we're at max tier for Bloodlust, and we're moving really quickly, which if we were still chasing him around a loop, we would easily catch up to him. Easily catch up to him, it's beautiful. So this Ness effect that you're seeing right now is called Contaminated. It is an effect that only applies to our newest killer, Nemesis, who, by the way, I mean, I love that killer. 
hella fun dude to play as. You only get contaminated with his whip attack. With his regular punch attack, you don't get contaminated. If you get whipped with his tentacle whip, you get contaminated. The only way to get rid of contamination is using one of these vaccine boxes around the map. So once I, once I get to one of these boxes, I can open up, get a vaccine, and cleanse myself of the contamination. Contamination also only applies to the sole survivor. It doesn't spread like plague's infection. You can't unhook a person that's contaminated and get contaminated. You can't work on a gen that's with somebody that's been contaminated and get contaminated. It's a one person only effect. It's rather interesting. But yeah, I hope this video helps out to you guys get a little bit more understanding to Dead by Daylight status effects because I know there's quite a lot of them and they're very confusing. Trust me. I know it takes a hot minute to learn all of them and figure out how they all interact with each other. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys liked the video, please, you know, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe if this helped you. And I also stream on Twitch every Sunday night, Tuesday night, Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, depending on if, uh, if I'm feeling well, and Friday nights. And we do a lot of Debbie Daily content, a lot of horror content, really just horror content in general. If you guys like horror games, feel free to check it out. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys have good and gorgeous days, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys!